Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you today. Hey, I've got a lot to share with you, but let's call for our daily bread first. Are you ready? Say with me, say, Father, I receive right now my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. So now I'll share with you the difference between Logos and Rema. So now I, I was telling the importance of understanding Logos, especially where it concerns you. See that now? That's what I was sharing with you yesterday. When God does something in your life consistently, at least if he has done it twice in your life, he's showing you something about his character where you are concerned. That's Logos. I get what I'm saying. So he's showing you something about his character where you are concerned. So if God will pay your bills consistently for two years, then it means that he has made provision for that bill. Now why, why is it good that you know it? So that you will take worry out of your mind. Now you remember the Bible says, uh, watch, guard your heart with all diligence. Because out of your heart are the issues of life. Now, that is the assignment that God has given to you. Your assignment is to mount security guard over your heart. Because everything that comes out of your mind, you are going to give account of it. So now you have the responsibility from God to be the guard over your mind. Are you getting it? So now, worry is one of the things that can influence what comes out of your heart. Because when you worry, soon it will affect your words. And your words reflect what is in your heart. So understanding the character, the personality, and the ability of God will begin to take out worry, for example. It will begin to take out strife. For example, because why do people get into strife? They get into strife because they don't trust God. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. People get into strife because they don't trust God. So, strife will influence your decision. So, because of strife, you can take a wrong decision. And then you are going to give account of that decision that you took. But when you understand the character of God, when you understand the personality of God, where you are concerned, you will understand why you don't have to strive. For example, you find David. Now, there's a story in the Bible. A David and his, his guys have helped secure the... Uh, the head or the, the cattle of a certain man. And David got information that this man is about to share some of his animals. And David sent a message to him. Say, oh, go tell that man. He's a rich man. Go tell him that, hey, can he give us some? At least we were kind in the wilderness to his people. So they sent the message down to the man. And the man, instead of responding, abused David. And when David heard that, he was mad. He said, what? After all the good we did to you, we'll deal with you now. And David was on the way to go attack this man. When they told the wife, Abigail, they said, ah, madam, there's a big problem. David sent men to your husband. And this was how he responded. But this was how David was good to us. So she ran immediately, got some goodies, and ran to meet David. And when she met David, she said, Look, don't go and avenge yourself. Now that word hit the pierced David's heart. Now because David was angry, by the actions of the man, he allowed rage to overtake him. And by that rage, he, was, he took a decision to go and destroy that man. But then, at that moment, he forgot his patterns and dealings with God that he is never supposed to avenge himself. 
So when that woman stopped him, when Abigail stopped him on the way and made those statements to him, he said, look, you are not supposed to avenge yourself. And David said, you are blessed for coming to stop me from disobeying God and avenging myself. See that now? Now, because God had taught David to trust in him. And because you're trusting in God, if someone you have helped before, now this is things we go through, someone you have helped before, now turns around and wants to pay you evil for the good that you have done. Now, it's normal to get angry. It's normal to be amazed and like, what next time, me, I would never. But you see, when you have come to that place of understanding with God, because God has taught you Logos, He has taught you about His personality, about His character, He has taught you, you know Him. You will look at that and say, Well, it is God that gives life. So, Father, I was expecting I'll get something from this man, but if you didn't move his heart to do it, then it's fine. I know you still reward me because you know God. And that's what caused Abraham not to get into strife with Lot. God had promised Abraham the land already. Yes, he had. Now, there was now strife brewing between the headsmen of Abraham and Lot. Abraham looked at the whole thing and says, no, I'm not going to let strife come in. So he took a decision right there to end strife. Why? Because he trusted in God. He had known God enough to know that, hey, we don't have to fight over this thing. God is going to give us our portions. And he withdrew. Did God show up? God did show up. Listening, the month of July is ending very soon. In a few days from now. I don't know how 2022 has been for me. But you see, every story you read about in the Bible, I think you need to, some of you need to go back and begin to read some of these stories again so that you can truly learn something. We don't have the Bible just for quotes. We have it to study and understand. So we find David, the word of God had come to him. We find him not fighting to bring to pass the word of God that had come to him. Even as regards his kingship, Twice, Saul came into his own stronghold. Not just that he came into his stronghold, he came there, laid down, and was sleeping deeply. David had the opportunity to destroy him, knowing that the man was after his own life. He had the opportunity, he had the right reason but David said no. Why? Because that would, mean, that, would, that would mean avenging himself. And he had received an instruction from the Lord not to. Because of trust. So the reason David didn't kill Saul was not because David was weak. It wasn't because David was afraid of Saul. It was because David was having respect to God who had promised him the kingship. Let me tell you this. If God have promised you something, there is no witch, there is no wizard that is strong enough to stop it. You say, no, ah, pastor, you don't understand, do ah, eh, If you know what they have done to me, if you know what witches have done to me, if you know what wizard have done, I stand here and I tell you the truth. If we will sit down I, and you and look at it, look at the issues critically I'll point out to you where Satan got you and not because Satan was too powerful but because you were weak 
He said, hey, I know my problem. I was weak in prayer. No, it was not prayer that was your problem. You know, sometimes, you know, that is also laziness because you don't take responsibility. So you blame it on something that is beyond you. So if God have promised you something, how will the devil stop it from happening? The only way the devil can stop it from happening is that he will stop you from getting to the place you're supposed to receive it. That's the only way. He can't stop God from showing up. He can't stop God from being faithful. But he can stop you from rising and going there. How? By bombarding your mind with his lies. Then eventually, when you don't get it, he's the same one that will come and tell you, you see, you see, it is because of that thing that you did wrong. It's because you didn't pray. If you had prayed all night before that day, you would have... You know, when I hear people talk, say things like that, I, I, I wonder, and I say, ah, do, do, do these people know who God is? Oh, God told me I was going to get a job. Okay. And then the day came, I didn't get it. Why didn't you get it? That night, I was sensing I should pray, but I slept. I didn't pray. That's how I lost that job. You didn't lose the job because you didn't pray. That prayer was supposed to raise your antenna and attention to keep watch. You lost it because you didn't keep watch. Listen, Jesus said, when, when he took the disciples to the Garden of Gethsemane, he said, watch and pray so that you will not enter into temptation. That's what Jesus said to them. Watch and pray so that you will not enter into temptation. When you watch, you will see when the temptation is coming. Prayer sharpens, because what does prayer do? Prayer gives you an opportunity to hear from God more and more often. Because there is no such prayer. There is no, you haven't prayed until you start hearing God speak to you concerning what you're praying. So prayer is a place of instruction. Are you getting what I'm saying? So, in the place of prayer, because I, I'm, I'm saying this, I say your problem is not that you didn't pray. Because even if you had prayed, it's possible you still miss it. That's why I'm telling you what you should be looking out for even when you're praying. When you're praying, What are you looking out for? You're looking out for wisdom. You're looking out for knowledge. You're looking out for instructions. So, I feel the urge to pray. Maybe I'm sleeping. It happens lots of times. And I'm sure it has happened to you. And then you feel a tap. Get up and pray. And then you get up like your eyes are so awake. Okay, let me pray. You stand up and you begin to pace. You begin to pace. Now when you're doing that, don't, don't shut your mind and think it is the force of prayer you're bringing out of your mind, that, mind that would, or your mouth that will do the job. No, that prayer, when he says get up and pray, he is telling you it's time to receive instructions about what's going to happen tomorrow. So your prayer must be with a listening ear. And suddenly, instruction begins to come to you. Tomorrow, don't leave the house by 7 a.m. like you were planning to. Rather, leave the house by 9 a.m. Okay. Okay. Now, because you're in the prayer mood, you you most likely receive that word clearly in your mind. Okay. Okay. All right. Now you must learn to lock it up, because by the time you sleep 
and wake up in the morning, it may just be like nothing happened in the night. So you may wake up early in the morning and start getting ready to wait. Oh, did I hear? Don't leave at seven. Leave at nine. Ah, no, maybe it's my mind. You will get to that point. But you see, when you when you hear that thing, either you declare it, either you write it. And remember last week I talked to you about writing. You write it down or make a statement. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Ah, you said I should leave by nine, not seven. Thank you, Lord. Now when you wake up. After that time, you will rem- what, what will be so real to you will be the decisions you took, not even the voice you heard. And then you said, okay, because it will still come to you. Did I really hear or did I? There are people who have heard God clearly, like I told you, as though it was an audible voice. And yet still doubted it. That time is up. Praise God. Now, all these things are things you learn by the stories and the scriptures. But if the Holy Spirit is not there to guide you, I'm telling you the truth, you learn nothing. May the Spirit of God guide you today. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.